increasing in stature and, and have increased in numbers. Mm -hmm. And they're the most dynamic uh, group of people. Uh, they've brought to us uh, different types of entertainment, yes. social media, creativity. Uh, but it seems as though many of the more senior generations uh, are having a hard time uh, tapping into uh, tapping into that. Now, Pastor Jasmine, uh, as a as a as a millennial pastor, mm -hmm. um, how would you describe uh, millennials? Uh, identity issues is there are they suffering from an issue of identity they seem you know I get a lot of millennials that um, that are seeking mentorship mm -hmm. and seeking guidance um, and, and and it seems as though they're just looking for some direction um, what, what do you think is behind that well I absolutely believe that there's an identity crisis um, the reason I say that is because we're um, the millennial group is an age group that's mostly uh, I'd say like Google influence, um, they can look, they can pretty much look anywhere for their answers. So with that being said, they don't know who they are or whose they are. They don't know um, what they have inside of them. They don't know that what they have is already on the inside of them and that they don't have to look to others for acceptance and so on and so forth. Right. So do you feel that there are certain behaviors that the millennial generation exhibits that shows that 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 they're looking for acceptance. Absolutely, um, you can see, like you will notice, a lot of them they'll try to do different things to alter themselves right. because they're not comfortable in the skin that they're in. They're not comfortable in who they are, so they begin to just um, they want to alter things that God has given them and the way that God has made them because of how everyone else is looking on the outside, and they don't really know, you know, in the long run, they don't really know what everyone else has going on on the inside. They just see the outside the, right. they just see the glamour side they just right. see the bigger picture of the celebrities and so on and so forth right so yeah and, and I think that's something that we do see a lot we see on Facebook and oh, yeah. we see all the great things when yeah. folks are yeah. going out to eat <laughs> yeah. when they're you know doing all these great things we don't see when the bill comes and they're very nervous mm. that they can't pay their life bill but we did right. see when they went out and so it can look as though the world is living a life um, that 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 they're not, and, and for those that are are in, are struggling in the area of identity. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, considering uh, you know TBN's purpose to preach Christ, I think it's important to say that um, it was God's establishment of family that a man and woman would come together, yes. and that that child would see the closest thing that they're ever going to see to God on earth through God manifesting through the mm -hmm. woman and God manifesting through the man. They're going to see the fullest characteristics of God through godly parents of God. So when we break that, we have issues like 75% of the people in jail and prison yes. are actually uh, without fathers, mm -hmm. not wow. without mothers, mm -hmm. but wow. without fathers. So, uh, Prophet Jonathan, um, considering that there's an issue, so we're talking about identity, mm -hmm. uh, and there's an issue, and, and there seems to be also an issue uh, with fathers that are directly correlating um, to uh, to the issues that the identity issues that they're having, how would you say um, that the how could um, families bridge the gap between fathers and children? Well, um, it's definitely an issue that um, that must be talked about um, in the family dynamic. Uh, when we talk about fathers not being uh, in the household, it definitely leaves an effect on the children. Um, just the presence of the father is very important. Mm -hmm. um, the father brings affirmation. The father brings security. The father brings that, uh, that force that's needed um, in the household. Whenever you see dysfunction in the house, 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, um, it's a lack of a father being there. That's just right. the presence of the father being there. But concerning the bridge being gapped, um, it's very important that uh, Understanding is foundational. Um, from one generation to another, I believe that uh, just the, the understanding, the lack of understanding from one generation to another, uh, the, them understanding that the times have changed um, from one generation to another, I feel like that alone being foundational, that being the nucleus of it all, I believe that that can definitely close the bridge and close the gap, as you said. Okay, mm -hmm. good. And so... Would you say that fathers need to be more active in the lives of the children? If so, why? Definitely. I, I definitely do believe that uh, fathers uh, must be active um, in the household, being that 
for one, that's their, that's their responsibility as, as uh, a mandate from God, you know, um, letting them know that they are the head, you yes. know, um, them being the, the gatekeeper, so to speak, um, for the future of the children, you know, and me being a father, you know, and a millennial, you know, it's my, uh, my duty and my obligation because we are obligated as men, you know, um, whether you're saved or not saved, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, you are responsible for that soul, you know, to, to provide, to affirm, to uh, provide that security that they need um, in this cold, dark world. Yeah. So you said that the fathers and, and the parents, mm -hmm. that, that millennials indeed are looking for affirmation. Mm -hmm. They're looking to be provided for. Um, and, and that there, there just seems to be this such um, uh, a break between, between that. And, um, and, and as you said earlier, it seems as though that there's just a lack of understanding mm -hmm. about the generation's culture. Mm -hmm. What would you say to millennials about um, honoring their parents mm -hmm. and allowing them the opportunity um, to parent? What would you, how would you well, guide them in that area? Well, honestly, um, it's, it's very important that we understand that what worked for one generation um, will, will, will not work for this generation. And, and I feel, like I said earlier, um, just the understanding um, on both parts, you know, on both parts, um, having, that, having that mutual respect and understanding that um, the, culture of, the culture of it is that um, we are living in a society that's always evolving. Mm -hmm. always evolving that's taken on the state of metamorphosis you know when we metamorphosize that's when we begin to take on one state to another and uh same thing with the culture of the family you know and 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 understanding that um it's it's we can't do without those that went before us right absolutely and we can't, and, the, and those that are coming up, we have to understand that. Absolutely, and that's, that's a great point, you know. Uh, and, and, and Pastor Jasmine, the, the, the Bible tells us to honor yes. our mother and father. Mm -hmm. Didn't say agree. Exactly. <laughs> um, and exactly. My, my father left when I was young, and, um, and we reconciled in my 20s, and it was a, it was a, it was a tough period of time, and mm -hmm. it had to come to that. Um, what, would, what would your advice be to millennials that are legitimately struggling mm -hmm. with issues um, embracing their parents, possibly because their parents may have done things to, to, uh, to encroach upon their beliefs and their identity? What would be your advice to millennials to help them reestablish relationship with their parents? Uh, my personal advice would just to be, you know, to like the word says to honor your mother and your father so that your days may be long we honestly we always tell our daughter that um they may not agree with the parents but just uh you know mutually respecting them respecting your parents um it's important you have to respect your parents you have to listen to what your parents say they're looking for your best interests um the reconciliation process may be difficult but i believe with time with praying um and just trying you know i believe it takes both sides trying both the parent and the child right. a lot of the times the parents can try but the child doesn't want to take correction or listen to what they have to say but i think honestly both uh both trying you know not just what the parent is saying but even as parents i believe we have to try to listen to what our our children are saying right um i think that's very important that's important that both parties maintain and then i think that both both parties um, extend a certain grace to one another, Absolutely. and as you guys said, your parents too. Yeah. And uh, so now you're seeing that there's certain mistakes maybe you're making, mm -hmm. and yes. you can't get it all right. But you're hoping uh, that your children will say, you know, well, mom and dad, uh, they they loved us greatly. Um, so we we've got. So why do you think that millennials are such? What, what makes millennials to be some of the most dynamic people that we've seen in our time? Why is it that millennials are harder for the other generations to? understand um again like i said earlier i think uh it goes back to the technology, technology. um they're very smart very uh, their iqs it's just it's amazing to see from generation to generation how smart this generation actually is um you ask them a question and they can find out 
in a matter of seconds whereas before it would be oh let me go let me go pull out this book and so on um but now they the the answers pr are pretty much at the tips of their hands yeah. and it makes them uh they're more they're they have more access to information now <laughs> and it i believe it it it's for their mind, their mind's sake, it makes them on a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. So this next, the older generation can't really perceive what they're saying because the older generation say, go pick up a book, go, you know, their, their perception of things is a lot different based on, you know, the timing and so on. Yeah, so access, the access to, to information, information mm -hmm. and that explosion that was prophesied in the Torah, that explosion yes. of information that was prophesied that would come. We, we are certainly upon that precipice, yes. precipice yes. And, and now um, they're being swayed. There's a lot of information oh, that's yeah. coming out and, and it does take um, mature leadership, parents, grandparents, and, se and senior generations mm -hmm. to guide and embrace and cultivate oh, yes. uh, the millennials. So I thank you guys uh, so much for giving us uh, insight into that. Uh, Prophet Jonathan, Pastor Jasmine, we thank mm -hmm. you so much. And, um, and for those that are here, again, thank you so much for uh, joining us and joining our town. Uh, I'm your host, Dr. Jason Jackson. Uh, we enjoyed having you and stay tuned for more episodes.